Before you know it, all this hideous blue foam is going to be transformed into mounds of garbage. Hmm. <laughs> that doesn't sound very appealing, but mounds of garbage for this glorious airship to fly over. My goal is sort of to create verticality while not looking like steps. Because I made this table for Jeremy, Black Magic Craft, for his game Torment. I really love this table, but I'm trying to break away from this stepped rock look, which sort of naturally happens when you're using flat bits of foam. So instead I'm trying to create these sort of sculptural rock forms and then fix them and make them make sense later. This is actually from my 3D printed bits kit. Oh, oh no. <laughs> This barbed wire has reminded me of something. The reason why this is a bit sad is my friend Luke uh, from Geek Gaming, he recently quit YouTube. And the, sort of the relationship that we had with each other is he'd call me up and he'd tell me excitedly about what product he was working on or some secret he discovered. And every time he'd tell me my terrain is shit, but he loved my videos, which was the best compliment on earth. And one of my proudest moments. This piece of barbed wire is from an old miscast terrain tutorial. All these little barbs are fishing line. And and every phone call, Luke would tell me my terrain is shit, except one time. And he hesitantly revealed to me that he had taken this tutorial and he made a 10 foot table using like a hundred feet of it or something. Hundred, he made, this is the, I only made this much barbed wire because it sucks to make it this way. And he made an entire table with it. And I told everyone for weeks that Luke used my tutorial to make terrain. Luke's a bloody legend. And you know, like I really believe in rising tides. When other creators rise up on YouTube, I think it helps everyone. Similarly, when someone goes, a big pillar of our community leaves. Yeah, there's a, there's a void there. It maybe fills me with a little bit of self-doubt sometimes. But, let's crack on. This is an old prototype measurement stick of mine. This is a relic. This is a hand reel for fishing. And I'm thinking, that's sci-fi garbage, for sure. That's cool, that looks cool. I like that. Oh, that's interesting too. I like the shape, but I like the interactivity here, being able to walk through that. I'm gonna go feed my cat and have a think. All right, yeah, that's it. Now we've got to cover everything else. I'm not trying to melt any plastic here, I'm just trying to get rid of these little hot glue wisps. I should wear a mask though. Yep. You know, really this is sort of just orky flower arrangement. You know, you find spiky things and you just push it into foam and then you build up all these little Mounds, I guess. These are Game Boy camera parts. 3D printable wargaming kit. Batman. I stole this from Viv. Hubba Bubba. Gum. Camera parts. Spider-Man backdrop. Dinosaur. The smell of burning foam is kind of bringing back some memories right now. Six months ago, I was couch surfing with patrons and uh, 
squatting in maker spaces. Got to hang out with hippies and punks and nerds and it was bloody awesome. And I was traveling with my friend Tina and we wanted a way to unite all our friends we'd met along the way. So Tina sketched up this beautiful D&D table for us to make. And with my friend Ems, who's this fantastic street artist that I met in Belgium, um, who I ended up getting an artwork tattooed on me, uh, we made sort of the foundation of this table together out of salvaged foam we found in construction sites. And, uh, you know, Belgium's a pretty different place to Australia. We, we had access to a laser cutter. It was like a community tool. And... I don't know, it was like a whole new world sort of unlocked, like a second pair of hands. I got to use my computer skills and just pump out buildings while we were making things by hand. It was really fun. But, you know, we were really fighting the the cold because this was around Christmas time. So we set up like a makeshift drying rack in front of the heater, which everyone who came in the morning thought we were setting up like a booby trap for them. And the majority of our table wasn't dry and it just refused to dry. And the only place where it was consistently warm was this gigantic shared bathroom. And we just planted it next to a heater. It kind of gross looking back, you know. (laughs) But I really, it's one of my favorite moments. I don't know, like, it's always those sort of moments that I really cherish. Where things are a little bit janky. My friend Riley and I, we used to commission paint together to pay rent. I was really trying to make YouTube work at the time had no money, neither did Riley, we were just taking on as many jobs as we could and uh, and sort of like faking it till we make it and we're in this little uh, little shed and uh, (laughs) and I'm I'm quickly trying to prime models with a rattle can while Riley's yelling faster, faster while he's one handing an airbrush doing xenophil highlights while on the other hand he's sucking down a durry the whole whole shed is just filled with fumes and smoke and uh it was one of the one of my favorite moments of my hobby ever i can't even remember what i was talking about good morning cat Understand that it looks like some kid just threw up everywhere. But painted, I think this is gonna look great. Rachel, check this out. This is from David. They said they've been in a creative rut in the last couple of weeks. You know, art has helped me a lot to pull myself out of it, thus I've created a token of thanks to this. Oh. Isn't that incredible? That's amazing. Oh. That's really incredible. How nice. Mark Vane on Instagram. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Rachel, this was uh, an old miscast terrain build. Can you? I assume that's what you wanted. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Is that what you wanted? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> it's like 2.30 a.m. and I'm trying to work out when to stop. <laughs> uh, when is a good time to say, yep, yeah, let's just let this dry so we can start painting in a few days. Rachel added this brickwork today. I added these little metal sheets. Rachel added all these little wire details. This is all ground up resin flashing and this oatmeal color that is old kitty litter. Old sprues and stuff. That's a Hello Kitty Gundam helmet. I kicked off my week last week by fulfilling all my miscast orders that I could. And I ended up shipping like 50 out the door. 
and I tried to make them all a little bit unique. There's a couple of twins out there, but you know, they're all hand cast and uh, I think they, they look pretty special. Oh, and my metal models, all these, these sold out. 25 sets. Sorry, I didn't have more. This is what I could sort of afford to produce right now. Uh, metal is bloody expensive and thank you for everyone that bought one. I promise if, if you wanted some, uh, I'll, I'll get some more made as soon as I can afford to. I can't believe I forgot to add cork. It is really a tabletop staple and it just has these nice rough edges when you break it off and it can be painted like stone or slate or metal. We're out of gap filler and hot glue sticks and PVA glue, totally out. But we have a shit ton of super glue. Let's kit bash some orcs. Last episode, you requested Nurgle orcs. So I ended up buying these. These are Oryx, the new Age of Sigma orc line. See, they're kind of gangly compared to their older cousins. Presenting my Nurgle boys, made of all different generations of plastic, fire, and green stuff. Um, mixed in some third party kits in there too. I'm sort of going for like a Uzumaki type look. Uzumaki. This is a fantastic Japanese horror manga. It's beautiful and twisted and crazy and it's been a massive inspiration for my artwork. A package arrived today from my mate Curtis, who was uh, sort of my molding and casting mentor. Oh, to Trent. Permission to bootleg any arms or weapons in. Check this out. Thank you for the permission to bootleg your stuff. Demon correct colors. Oh, okay. We'll get back to that. Ah, uh, I left some models with Curtis and I said, you can do whatever you want with them. You can, you can hack them up. You can recast them. And he's made, he's made some of my sculpts into new miniatures for his Kickstarter. This is cool. The fact that these are all hand sculpted blows my mind. And I have a gigantic bag of hand options. Also have all these little tokens and bases. I think we should add to this. So remember those demons I made a little while ago? Oh, <laughs> look at it. This demon, I left the masters with Curtis in hopes that he could fashion together a new set. I've worked with my friend Pablo from the Steel Tower. I'm gonna do a little art print with it. <sighs> ah, man, this is exciting. Curtis made a sprue from one of my sculpts. That is so cool. And that, that's also one of my sculpts. Oh man, oh, that's so sick. Thank you, Curtis. Okay, warning you, this is dumb, but it is like 3 a.m. <laughs> what do you think? Right, it sucks, but in a good way, maybe. Um, after a bit of sculpting, bring it all to, I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna sleep, maybe I need sleep, and then I'll work out if this is cool tomorrow. Good morning, next day me here. It's not bad. I'm gonna sculpt on it until it's good. Ta-da! <laughs> yeah, uh, look, it's a monstrosity for sure. So this has old school goblin bits on it, fantasy orc bits. I don't know where this head is from. This was in the miscast box from Curtis. The truck component is an orc truck. These are from Foundry. I bought while I was in the UK. This is a dinosaur toy and all these Cool chain, tree bits, all these tentacles, that shield, that is from this episode's sponsor, Ghostfire Gaming. Oh yeah, so I was telling the story. This table was the one that sort of got away. We ran out of time, we ran out of money. We needed to leave the country and we set a deadline. 
<laughs> How long have you been working on it, friend? A, a while. It's <laughs> like hard a few to weeks. Keep track, yeah. We had train tickets we couldn't miss, and we just had to stay up all night and finish it. And uh, I worked, and I worked, and I worked up until the last hour. And I stood back, and I realized, oh, you know what? I haven't got the final shot of this table yet. And no matter what I did, I just couldn't get a shot that I liked. The final shot, the money shot, the money shot is everything. The one that the sponsorship sort of relies on the people at home to feel like they got a satisfied ending. No, I couldn't get it. You know, that 24 hour marathon all felt like a waste because I was never going to see this table again, probably. I just grabbed everything that I thought might be useful or I couldn't afford to lose. And on my way out, I saw the destruction that I caused to Tone's house, his beautiful workshop. I flipped it inside out trying to get this table done with no time to clean it. I remember when you finally made it to the train station, minutes to spare, and I felt in my pocket something and I pulled it out. And in my hands were Tone's house keys. <laughs> So not only was I just this absolute goblin, but also the biggest inconvenience in the world. Alright, I don't even... I can't. <laughs> <sighs> so, this footage here, this has sat on my computer for like six months now. I feel like some sort of poltergeist. <laughs> like, um, you know, or like this is constantly haunting me that this project just isn't done. But today, um, that's finally being put to rest because my friend Tina, who's bloody brilliant, she united some of our friends we met along the way and uh, has hosted a D&D &D game with them. She's made a video about that that I can't bring myself to watch because <laughs> I miss those people far too much. But I will, I'll watch it. Um. But we had a lot of fun on our d, &D session. The story ended up going something like this. The wizard Peter the Betty lost a card game with Sporlin and couldn't stomach his loss and trapped Sporlin into a magical prison. This caused the local fungi to rise